Yo, what's going on? My name is Chris Phillips, and I am here with Adam Pelham for Elevate Your Leadership Podcast. Adam, today we are talking about personal productivity hacks. New year, new you. Let's be productive. What do you say? All right, all right, all right. Hey, what's going on? My name is Chris Phillips again. Like I mentioned a second ago, I am here with the co-host. What is your name? My name is Adam. Let's go. Come on. I'm ready. Should we do a heat check? We hadn't done a heat check in a while. <laughs> it's been a hot I second, brought the heat dude. today. Thank you. Let's Shout go. out Hayden Ratner. Shout out PH, man. Or Pastor Hayden Ratner Golly. for the taxis that he Super gave me. Super clean. Buttery. Yeah. They're nice. Buttery. Oh, they feel so good, too. I know. They do know. have a different leather. It feels nice. Dude, it's different. Yeah. It's okay. different. It is different. Shout out PH, man. Not easy to match the, uh, the, 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 the yellow with everything, but it's good. Yeah, I you like look it. very Steelers. It pops. Yeah, and I'm not. So, go Broncos. <laughs> go Bron- Bronco it's Broncos. Nation. Let's all ride. Day. All day. Oh, no. Hang on. So, hey, Adam, today we thought about uh, a couple of things that we could talk about in terms of um, just, like, h- how can you go to the next level in your leadership? Yeah. Um, and, man, over the last year and a half, probably two years, really, I'm really zoning in on a couple of things right now for me. Um, in my leadership specifically, as um, I've had more plates spinning and things going on, I've had to be more cognizant of when I do things. Yeah, I, I want to give my best to the things that I need to give my best to. And, and not that I don't need to give my best to everything, uh, but there are certain things in and throughout my day where it's like, okay, this does not take as much uh, mental and emotional yeah. and physical energy to do. So I don't need to do that when I'm at my highest mentally physically and emotionally. Yeah. Right. So I'm trying to calculate my day on like, okay, these things are good there. These things are good there. We're calling it uh, personal productivity hacks. Right. Yeah. Um, but a couple of years ago I led our team through a book and we will walk through a, a, an exercise from Carrie Newhoff. If you haven't read the book, it's great. I think Adam, you got a copy Game of it changer. Um, yeah. at your best is the name of the book. Um, that we are uh, kind of got some inspiration from with yeah. Kerry Newhoff. And um, man, Kerry said this in that book. He said, you owe it to yourself and the people you love the most to bring your best energy to each day. Mm. Yikes. Mm. You owe it to yourself and the people you love the most to bring your best energy to each day. I'd That's even so go good. further in being in ministry to say that the work that we do has an eternal impact. Yeah. And so if we can't bring our best to every day for something that has eternal impact for so many, then man, we're really missing the boat. And so I need to discipline myself. I need to be probably more rigid with yeah. some things so that I'm bringing my best every day so that hopefully we can make the most for the, the kingdom of God, mm-hmm. right? Um, my neighbors that don't know Jesus deserve me to bring the best for me to help them walk into that relationship. Yeah. The ones, we call them the ones, the, the ones that have never been to church, those that were praying that God would bring into a church setting or a conversation about Jesus, they deserve me to be at my best throughout the week so that when they do come there, like they're getting, you know, everything. And so uh, today we're going to talk about some productivity hacks um, and productivity kind of zones, if you will, on how you can lay out your day. You've actually done a good job growing in this area, I think. Yeah, this this book was instrumental for me a couple of years ago, and, and I've tried to... Instrumental, what a instrumental. word. Instrumental, yeah, right? That's great. That's yeah, the right. That's, that's it. Your, that's your $5 yeah, word for that's the day. That's it, man. Come like, on. it's, it's maybe impactful. I got it from that book. Yeah, maybe. Uh, very, very valuable for me. Um, I've seen I've seen a difference in in my life uh, from in, in work habits and, li- and life habits from knowing knowing your zones what we'll yeah, talk about absolutely yeah. I, your word for the day for me is chobani we'll talk about that later okay just a little drop chobani don't shout think. out shout out chobani um so here's what i want to do uh, the the concepts that we're talking about here is like a red yellow and green zone yeah um as a matter of fact even in, in carrie's book he's got like a little dial how, how to get time energy and priorities working in your favor and and from there he he's not the originator of this but um many many marketplace uh you know business marketplace you know kind of productivity hacks would do the same thing find yeah. your zones you know the things that, that work well for you. But I think red, yellow, green is probably the best, um, you know, because yellow, we're slowing down yep. or speeding up if you're an aggressive driver. You'd never know. Um, yeah. I would be more of the speeding up guy. Adam would be more slam of the, the brake. slam the brake yeah. guy. <laughs> red is I'm stopped and green is like, let's go. Here we go. Yeah. And um, so it's that, right? So, I mean, red zone is is exactly that. Like it's, it's, it's a time when you're like least productive. Like you don't feel like you can get anything done. Yeah. Um, mentally, you're physically drained. Like it is not the time during this red zone time for you to do significant work 
creative work or like significant decision making time? When's your red zone? Um, red zone used to be mornings, and oh. we'll talk about the, yeah. But now, now red zone is definitely post seven p.m. Oh I'm my gosh! <laughs> Don't, like if I have to make a decision after like six p.m., it's, it's over. Bad. Yeah, it's not good. Um, and my elder meetings right now are six yeah, p.m., so it's yeah. tough. That's um, those are days I have to really pay attention. But like, Lock yeah, in. red zone. We'll talk about that in a minute with yep. the red zone. Yellow zone. This is like the transitional kind of. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 like a moving target a little bit. You're not at your peak energy. But you're also not like completely drained where you don't need to make any decisions, right? Like you could do routine tasks. You can have like like less demanding activities are in your yellow zone. When's your yellow zone? Um, post lunch. Yeah, post lunch. Mine's naturally. like two two thirty. Yeah, kind of two thirty for me. Yep, I, I'm still good. Maybe even three three to seven. Like mm-hmm. to me, three to six somewhere around there. Yeah. It's like yellow. Like yep, two thirty three seven to seven somewhere around there is yellow for me. And then green, baby, let's go. Come on, this is peak productivity. My mind is fresh. I'm All energized. I'm creative. It's ideal for the most important and creative task of the day. Yeah. Um, green zone is for you. Mornings now. Yeah. Yeah. Was well, not. No. Are you fully switched? Yeah, dude. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. great. Game changer. Like, man, get me up in the morning. I'm ready. Yeah. To, I am yeah. ready to go. Yeah. That um, yeah, it's made. I've made that switch probably in the last last year. Okay. What yeah. what like how did you make that switch? So yeah, for me, I found. Um, so I try to um, try to exercise. Every day, if not every day, you know, if I miss movement. one movement, right? Movement every day. And what I found is actually, I used to be a big believer in working out, going at going in the afternoon after work, all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I found actually is moving and exercising actually gives me more energy. Okay. Where it's like, you know, if I'm sitting around all day, what, I mean, what's that law? I don't know if it applies. I know it's physics. I don't know if it applies to, to humans or not. Uh, an object in motion stays in motion. An yeah. object at rest stays at rest a little yeah. bit. So what I found is like, man, actually the the three or four hours post, you know, moving, exercising, whatever that looks like, um, I'm actually more awake. I'm more alert, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Now, flip side, you know, like we talked about um, after the workday now, it's like 7 p.m. post that. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, it's, I'm why I'm, so, it's why I'm done because I'm not yeah. moving. Like I get on the right. couch like after the kids yeah, go to bed. Yeah, you're not moving. Yeah, yeah, after the kids go to bed and everything, I could fall asleep at any time. I, yeah. I typically go to sleep about 10.30. Okay. Um, I wake up at like 4.45. My body doesn't require a ton of sleep. So that's... Clearly. I, I've been... <laughs> that's I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been uh, average American gets less than six and a half hours of sleep now. Yeah. Um, wow. I saw a study not too long ago. Um, anyways, and uh, but my body doesn't require it. And I've been yeah. tracking it, right? And, um, but like if I, if I ain't doing anything on the couch, like, oh man, I'm, I'm done. I Cash. Be, yeah. I, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Um, Libby can watch something. You get the head dose a little yeah, bit. Yeah, done. <laughs> out. Uh, green zone for me is for sure in the morning yeah. and, um, it's there. So what, what really, um, what you have to do with these zones, right? You, you have to like, you've got to identify your zones, like much like mm-hmm. Adam walked through here. Yeah. Nobody's saying that one zone is better than the other. You, you may be full on red in the morning. Yep. And what that means is like, you don't need to prioritize heavy decision-making and creativity in the morning. Yeah. Um, I am married to what I would think is, uh, one of the most, uh, get after it Proverbs 31 women that I know. Yeah. Um, and, and she is very much can be a, a green zone past 7 PM. Yeah. And I'm like, that's wild. Yeah. Not, not in the morning. Like is you know, anything before 8 AM? Don't even talk to her. Not a, not a green zone, <laughs> not a green yeah. zone. And she knows that and like yeah. not green zone. Yeah. And, um, and so no, it's not right or wrong. It's you. Yeah. And, and I think that's where like, you know, we have to get away from the mindset of like this cookie cutter mentality. Yep. Oh, CEOs do this. Yep. Oh, be, the best pastors I know do this. Oh, the best leaders I know do this. No, 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 no. You got to be the best you. Yeah. And this at your best mentality that, that mm. Newhoff writes about your productivity zone is your productivity zone. Yeah. And so you just got to be able to make it. Doesn't mean you can't like, there may be days where the organization that you're with is going to have you make decisions in your yellow or red zone. You just sure. got to be prepared for that. Yeah. You need to let people around you know that like, okay, hey, I may need to process this until this afternoon. I'm in my red zone right now. I need to get to my green zone so that I can make the best decision on yeah. this one. Or yeah. you got to understand, is this a red, yellow or green decision to make? Yeah. If it's a, if it's a red decision, go ahead and make it. You sure. know, but if it's, if it's needing green, yeah. then, then make sure you do it in a green. And so how do you do that? Um, Adam, the first one that we have here is self-reflection exercise. I mean, like talk a little bit about that. Like you, you walk through this. Yeah. How did you self-reflect on what you needed to do? Yeah. I combined, um, really the zones that I found myself in with the workday, combining that even with like 
things that I'm naturally more passionate about in my job and in my work and things that I'm not necessarily passionate about but still need to do. Because when we talk about red, green, yellow zones, it's like that doesn't give you a pass just to not do anything during the red zones. Yeah. Right. You still got to go to I'm work. You, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm in red zone. Don't yeah. talk to me for a couple hours. Like you still got to do your job. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's prioritizing. OK, what are the natural things that I am that I love about my job and you know don't hear i love everything about my job don't no, you. You. <laughs> but what are the things that i don't actually should <laughs> what are the things yeah. that i'm actually more inclined and passionate about for me i love um even just investing in relationships and and talking with people and all that kind of stuff so for me i can really go grab coffee with somebody in a red and a yellow and a green zone because yeah. it's what i'm passionate about so i know my post afternoons um, I kind of set up meetings or discipleship stuff with other people uh, in those zones because I'm naturally, I can do that when yeah. I'm tired or when I'm energetic. Right. Whereas some other things, whether it's a uh, really big editing day or things that might be a little bit more mundane or things like that in the mornings where I got to be productive and yeah. got to be sharp, then I'll put that in, in the green zone. And so that's yeah. kind of helped me. So like for same thing. So like I, I plan all my meetings with people in the afternoons. Yeah. Not because I want to diminish what they are. Sure. But I don't have to be creative in those because those come naturally. Yeah. People encourage. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm enthused by by that. So I don't right. I don't want to put those in my green zone where I need my most productivity. I'm right. not the most creative person. Right. So when I have to do creative things like writing and reading and researching and stuff like that, I need to be doing it in my green zone. Yeah. Because if I'm doing it in my yellow or red zone, I'm not going to get the best. Because number one, I need yeah. every ounce of creativity I can possibly think of because that's not my natural inclination. But I can be around people all day long, right. you know, and I can make decisions and all that kind of stuff. So I can do those things. So slipping my schedule to go like, okay, let me do people meeting in the afternoons because that's my yellow or even in the evenings because that's I can do that in my yellow or red. But man, creatively speaking, if I'm doing this or podcasting or thinking or researching or, yeah. you know, any of that kind of stuff, writing, I need to do it in the mornings. Like I try to get my my manuscript for my message is is in my mind due uh, Thursdays at noon so that everything can be done. Partly that's so everybody, you know, on our team can can yeah. get everything out and do that. But right. also partly because I know if I set noon, then I'm going to finish it in the morning and it's going to be my most creative time. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, for me. So you have to really self-reflect on like what what you have in your job context, in your workplace, you know, in your, your journey and your leadership journey, but also like where you're the best, right? And doing that. But then what I would do is I, I just reflect like, where did you have the most energy the last week? Like, man, I just start tracking it. Where did you have the most energy? Where did you feel encouraged and enthused? Now, if you stayed up till whenever, you know, and then got a, a little sleep, don't don't use that day as an example. Right. But like on a normal rhythm where you're getting the sleep you need, where you're getting the energy that you need, start to think back like when you were the most energetic, when you felt most creative, when you felt most alive in what you were doing. And then honestly, I would start journaling it. I'd write it down. Yeah. Go, go a week or two, write it down. Man, I felt great here. You know, just in your journal, in, in something, in a notes app on your phone or whatever else, just write morning afternoon and evening and then next to it felt like energy you know check mark uh, drained check mark whatever it is yeah. like put it in there start journaling it do that for a couple of weeks so then you can find out hey man like this is pretty consistent that you know after 2 p.m i felt a little bit more yellow um you know or maybe i felt green you know whatever it is and then really you have to like really this is chobani you got to start considering external factors yeah. right yeah. This is where we need like a ding every time I say Chobani. Yeah. Um, no, like it, it, external factors, exercise, diet, sleep, man. I can't tell you how this is, I think, where most people are really missing it. Yeah. We are just trying to do whatever. We're trying to eat whatever. We're not trying to move. Yep. We're not trying to get sleep right. We're just doing whatever and going, well, I don't feel good. And it's like, I don't have that energy. Yeah. It's because you're really not, you're not taking yourself serious yeah. enough to know that you got to do certain things. So I've been tracking mm. uh, everything on mine from a whoop device for the last like two years to find like, you know, I'm trying to get in the green zone in yep. terms of recovery. Um, in that. And a lot of that goes to my diet, my eating habits and all that kind of stuff. Some of this, I know everybody around the office is tired of hearing around about HRV and they're like, HRV, is that like a car? What do we got going on? <laughs> heart rate variability. This is the milliseconds in between your heart rate. And, and it basically measures that. And the higher the HRV, the better the recovery you can get. So you could sleep 10 hours and have a low HRV and, and get bad feel, recovery. Yeah, yeah. Or you can get like me five and a half to six and a half hours of sleep have the right heart rate variability and your recovery can be in the 80 to 90%. Yeah. Um, and so for me, one of the things like, okay, so I'm, I just started taking like fish oil, omega threes and stuff like that, that increases brain and heart activity. Mm. Boom. My heart rate's there. I'm now taking, don't, don't laugh at me. I'm taking a men's one a day pill. Oh my goodness. 
I'm 43. It's that time. I'm 43. It's, it's that time of your life. I have huh? to get my prostate checked at some point. Yo. Taking a one a day. You know, I might have like the little pill things wow. that say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, oh, Saturday. Yeah. Oh, I've, yeah. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm full coming. on my way. But listen, that's it's there. I'm taking a one a day and I do fish oil omega three. I Man. take that every t- every dinner. Um, and then before I go to bed, not before I go to bed, eight p before 8 p.m., I have some yogurt, some yeah. sugar free Chobani yogurt. Yeah. And here's the reason. That the probiotic and stuff in it helps your heart and your brain activity. Yeah. That helps your HRV. That helps you get recovery. Every time I've had Chobani before 8 p.m., I've done it. Now, for me, here's what I found out. Uh, Adam, I can drink as much coffee as I need to up until 8 p.m. Yeah. I, like, I, I could have a espresso at 7.59. Yeah. But, and I sleep. I still get the same amount of sleep. But my recovery is different if I drink anything. I could drink water at 7.59 wow. and be okay. My wow. recovery is good. If I go past 8 p.m. Huh. with any liquids, whether yeah. it be water or coffee or whatever else, I get sleep. I sleep the entire time, but my heart rate variability and my recovery is good. So lower. I yeah. I try not to eat past 8 p.m. and not to drink past 8 p.m. Okay. So that my body, while I'm sleeping, gives me the recovery. Yeah. I try to work out four to five days a week, no more than 20 minutes. I'm not doing hardly anything. Sure. I'm just trying to move Yeah. and get that going. A heart rate. The last minute of my shower is the best and worst minute of my shower <laughs> every day because I turn it on cold water. Yeah. I'm not like, how do you know people cold plunge? Just turn on their Facebook. They cold plunge. They, they let this you know. is like, yeah. yeah. How do you know they CrossFit and cold plunge? Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. They're going to tell you about it in three seconds. I don't cold plunge, but the last minute of my shower is cold. It's as yeah. cold as I can actually get the water. I'm breathing. I'm screaming like a child at times, <laughs> depending on when it is. But what it does is it opens up your lungs, open up the capillaries. It gets the oxygen yeah. and those types of things going, which you know what that helps? Your HRV. There you go. And you get the green recovery. So that when I, and I know the difference. I don't even have to track it now. I know the difference when I wake up. Sure. Oh yeah. Did good. Blah, 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 blah. This, that, and the other can track yeah. it. it what, you talked a little bit about it. Exercise and movement for you. Yep. That was big. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, uh, the biggest, uh, just to segue a little bit even into what we'll talk about in just a second with some practical tips and things like that. Chobani. Um, Chobani. Yeah, there you go. Sugar-free. That's that's a tough, bro. That's a tough ask. 60 right calories. There. It's not bad. Man. Yeah. Um, I think a big thing, even for people in, in my generation, um, you know, young leaders who are um, fresh out of college or, or post-grad life, whatever that looks like, you know, kind of directly after like you're you're just trying to go and you're trying to get after it and you're trying to move and do everything and say yes to everything and commit yeah and and elevate in in your job and in your career and my favorite quote um from from carrie in this book he says many people are overwhelmed overcommitted and Mm. overworked Mm. doing exactly what they thought they wanted to do with their lives man dude and it's real because it's like Man, I'm doing like Lord will and hopefully if if you're in in stepping in leadership and growing and in this kind of season of life you're like I'm feel like I'm wanting to do yeah. I'm doing what I wanted to do and I'm overcommitted, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overworked. This there has to be a better way, yeah. right? And this is exactly what we're what we're talking about. Yeah, there and is. so and so really in this what you have to start doing is start to align your tasks with your zones. Yeah. So mark this out, journal it out, do these things. And then you need to start identifying your tasks. Yeah. What do I need to do? What is my regular routine in my workplace and everything else? This looks different for everybody. But then as best you can, start to align your task with your zones. Where you need high creativity, be in your green. When you need high energy, be in your green. Where it doesn't require that much, go to yellow or red. It's fine. And so I'm telling you, you'll be more productive because it's not going to be as draining in those areas. And I think, you know, you mentioned this earlier. You've got to have flexibility. For sure. Like it's okay. You can't like. You can't make everybody work around you. You're right. in a team environment. Right. So you have Sorry, to I'm in the red. Yeah. Hey, See you later. Get out of here. Yeah, like you right. just got a big that's, red that's thing on your door. Life. Yeah. yeah. Like, put the red on your door and be like, right. no people, no yeah. people right now. <laughs> um, you can't do that all the time. Yeah. You might be able to do some stuff. Yeah. But, or if somebody wants to schedule a meeting with you, you could say, hey, it seems like this is going to be a really important meeting. Um, I may want to do this in the morning yeah. instead of in the afternoon mm. because I want to be at my best for this, mm. right? And and start to do that. And yeah. so I've done that. And, like, and if people hear that, yeah. they're going to respect that. Hundred like, percent. Oh wow, he wants. To, yeah, I want to be at my best. Yeah, you know. And right. so I, I've done that. There, I try not to do a ton of my people meetings in the morning because okay. I can function uh, with people in my yellows and reds. Yeah, but. Some of my most important meetings with people, I will schedule in the morning. To yeah. go, okay, we need to creatively think about vision sure. or, you know, these types of things. Sure. So let's make these decisions together. Um, so, you know, you, you have the morning people versus night owls, you know, that's that's going to affect it. And it's not, ra- it's not wrong. Neither one of those are right or wrong. Yeah. Nobody is saying you got to wake up at 445 and do everything. 
we're just saying you need to find what's best for you yeah. um, and then move into that, right? Um, and then set boundaries, protect your green zones from interruptions. Like when mm. you really are flying through this, protect it. Be like, man, block out your calendar. I do time blocking in my calendar. Um, and so there's sermon writing time blocks. Yeah. So, uh, you know, t- the team and everybody knows like, hey, th- we're not scheduling anything during this time. There's no one-on-ones going during this time because this is creative time, you know. And so protect it, like put boundaries around it. But also like tell them that, hey, one of the greatest things I have to do right now is guard this time so that I could be at my best for this because this is such a crucial component. So I need you to know, I'm not saying I don't want to meet with you. Can we just meet at a different time? Because I'm trying to protect these boundaries. One, they're going to respect you for what you're trying to protect. Two, they're going to respect you for for being honest about it in that type of way. Yeah. And man, like rest and recovery. Like you you have it's been going changer. to bed yep. and you've been waking up. Yep. Like you've actually been doing that. Like yep. you've really like leaned into that this yep. year. How does how are you feeling right now while 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 walking through that? Yeah, I mean, as energized as, as I felt and ready to go. And it goes back to what we've talked about last episode of take like work work hard, play hard, rest hard. Yeah. You've got you've got to reset. You yeah. got to rest. You got to recharge. You got to Sabbath. Yeah, and that's all. Those these things are all yeah. coming together in one thing. I look at the life of Jesus. Um, obviously, he's divine, right? Fully yep. human, fully divine. But he did a lot. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I don't like this culture where we're like, you know, I just need to sleep fifteen hours. Yeah, I need to. I need a break. Yeah. And I'm like, you don't, you don't, you don't need a break. Right. You just need to do yeah. the right thing at the right time man. in the right zones. Jesus right. was going, man. Going. He did so much in, in 33 years. I mean, Crazy. like, and like, yeah, I had the realization the other day. So it was my birthday not too long ago. I just turned 28 and I actually thought, oh man, 30 is coming. And like 30 is like right when Jesus yeah. started. Like, especially like yeah. where am I at at 30? Talk, you know, like, I'm a decade older holy than cow. Jesus. Yeah. Was yeah. Right. How do you so think I like, feel? <laughs> what a life. I've done nothing with my years. life and yeah. I live for a decade. But it, it's more than so Jesus true. Did. He, he, I mean, he yeah. was going, he was going all the time. Yeah. And so also man, had that balance. And I, I mean, obviously he knew his own yep. and uh, probably better than everybody. So 100%. Hey, under, understand your zones, understand the concept of it, right? Identify your zones, like where you are, which ones are yours, where's the best. Um, the third thing, I mean, the, yeah, the next thing is to tailor your schedule, mm-hmm. tailor your schedule to it. So know, know the zones, understand them, identify yours, tailor your schedule to it. Then, I mean, like, man, just start living it out, like live it out. Yeah. Right. And then guard your time and do all of that kind of stuff so that you can be living at your best. Right. When you understand when you are at your best, you can schedule your most important work when you're in your prime, Carrie Newhoff says. Mm. When you understand when you're at your best, you can schedule your most important work when you are in your prime. And so, man, hey, I I encourage you, if this was encouraging for you today, man, live this out. If you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, Man, hit us up. You know, give us some experiences that you have, what works best for you and all of that kind of stuff. And then, man, subscribe, tune in, uh, share this with other people. If this was something that encouraged you um, or you think could encourage someone else, share it with them. Share the link to the uh, podcast. We'll have some notes and stuff like that. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you can be at your best um, because what you do matters. It matters for you, matters for those around you, but most importantly, it matters for the kingdom of God. So elevate your leadership. Let's do it. Until next time.